महावराहो गोविंद सुषेण कनकांगदी गुह्यो गभीरो गहनो गुप्त चक्र गाधर महावरा Varaha avatara has been indicated over here, which we have already gone through earlier. Those two brothers, Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, they were none other than Jaya, Vijaya themselves who had been cursed by the Kumara, Sanat Kumaras. So they came down as Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu first time. Second time they came as Ravana and Kumbhakarna. In the third time they came as Shishupala and Dantavart. So therefore, Hiranya, Hiranyakshas, Uh, destruction has been indicated over here how was he killed he was killed by the lord and varaha avatar so varaha avatar what is he is the one who we are told took mother earth bhudevi they told he rolled her up as though we roll up a carpet and then took her deep down below into the um, you know in the in, into the darkest regions and then hid her over there so once mother or bhu devi is not available what can anybody do lord will create and create and send where will he send his created so therefore that's what he did and at that point of time bhagavan had to come in the form of varaha swami and therefore did he do he with this huge the, the divine bore incarnation b o a r so he came in the form of a varaha went deep down below where he where hiranyaksha had hid bhudevi mother earth killed the rakshasa and retrieved her back so therefore always say lakshmi varaha swami since he retrieved mother earth mother earth means this, the the surface of the earth on which we are st- standing on so for all it's a tradition for all the uh, immovable property real estate we want to buy a piece of land it can be farm land it can be a small little plot for our house anything to do with land they always say invoke the grace and blessings of varaha swami he is the one who will give permission he is the one who will bestow on us the uh, sampad bhumi sampad he will give to us so therefore maha varaha govinda we had gone through this elaborately when we took up krishna's names earlier it has already come over there govinda govinda was the title given to krishna when he did the govardhana uddhar so what does govinda mean go represents so many thing not only that he is the lord of the the pati of the cows not only the he is the lord or the master of the gopas and the gopis go also represent good qualities sattvic qualities so the lord of all that which is noble all that which is virtuous all that which is divine go represents that go also represents knowledge what knowledge are we talking about spiritual knowledge we are talking about over here lord himself is the is the content of the vedas he himself is the author of it also he alone knows just now we saw kritagnya he alone knows so he alone can give to us also the highest knowledge so the lord of spiritual knowledge go also represents walk speech it represents so govinda ha mean the lord of speech if he is there with us our speech will be all right so that is what govinda means so shena ha just like shiva has got all his ganas who are always there with him vishnu also has got his own little uh, let's say team around him and about him that is called as sushena hawai the, uh, the shiva ganas just look like shiva no, uh, almost an image of replica of shiva bhagavan vishnu is not like shiva we we know that abhishek priya shiva we say alankara priya vishnu we say he is always dressed in silken robes uh, he has got all the jewelry on him um, um, uh, vishnu so therefore he his uh, the, the people around him the team around him also will be just like him so therefore if he is so charming and if he is so beautiful not that we are saying shiva is not charming satyam shivam sundaram he is so therefore bo- both of them but here we are talking about vishnu sahasranama 
so as beautiful and as charming he is so also are the people around him and about him they are very beautiful they are very charming great they are and we say beautiful and charming we are not talking just outer beautiful beauty we are talking about inner beauty also so whoever is there around him and about him he is ganas they are beautiful outside and they are beautiful inside also who will be beautiful inside the rishis the bhaktas the virtuous people the noble people all of them are bhagavan's clans only all of them are bhagavan's ganas only so when it comes to krishna avatar we say vaishnava army narayana sainya yet they were all as powerful as he himself so sushena ha tanakangadi one anga means limbs so one who has got golden ornaments on his arms arms not only the top portion of the arm but even the upper arms also we when we see a picture of vishnu we can see see that he has got golden ornament covering the upper portion of his shoulders as well as he has got armlets also it's just a beautiful description of him kanakangadihi one who has got beautiful ornaments he is wearing those ornaments why do we uh, uh, have these ornaments uh, doing you know adorning the lord there is a scientific reason behind it also when especially when we are uh, uh, you know in a temple when we have the murti or the idol of god the murti, when they do the prana pratishta the the powers would have been instilled into the lord prana would have been instilled into the lord and therefore when we go to the temple and when we invoke the lord the way he should be invoked his blessings his grace will come to flow to us the the, the very good positive energy the vibrations from the idol from the the idol is not just a stone idol it represents for us the deity that will reach us now when we have these uh, ornaments around the lord gold or silver or the uh, gems the ruby the emerald all of them the diamonds all of them will act as carriers of energy they will they will uh, not only contain it not only will they draw it from the cosmos the the you know the positive energy that is there in the cosmos it all is drawn into the idol into the murti it is it is uh, you know sustained over there and when we all go over there and connect with the lord it we can draw from there also that's that is what is there behind gold therapy silver therapy or even the gem therapy why do we wear silver why do we wear gold on particular portions of our body there is a reason for it it's not just to decorate ourselves that we are wearing the gold around uh, on ourselves the it can be the earrings or it can be the the, the ornament on the forehead the nose ring then the chain the bangles the the rings on the finger or the waist band they are all very very important bangle even the armlets all are made either of silver or gold and then they will all be gem studded why all those thing they all help us to contain the positive energy which we would have drawn from the lord or which would have drawn from the cosmos metal and stones so that's the reason why and there are and particular points only it's very technical we won't go into the details of it we can't wear whatever we want anywhere there are certain points on our body where alone if we wear and again what we wear then maximum influence so that's that is what is indicated by kanakangadihi one who has got golden ornaments on his arms and shoulders guhya guhya gabira gahana gupta i am taking all the four of them together because the meaning is almost the same so gu means very very deep so guhya means he is most deep and profound is this bhagavat tatva deity we know nama roopa guna kriya is very easily available for us even that we can't understand krishna is there what is this name indicate why is he blue in color why is he always wearing the yellow the dhoti and not any other color clothes around him 
and he is caught why does he have four arms vishnu why is he carrying those specific whatever he is carrying in his hand the shanka chakra gada padma ityadi why has he got two wives on either side shri devi and bhu devi if it is shiva we say gauri and ganga if it is uh, subramanya we say valli and devasena why all these things each one. so what all do they represent why is the lord standing on a lotus so many things are there which we even even saguna we are not able to understand when it comes to nirguna it becomes even more mysterious for us it is very very deep it is very very profound how will we understand the lord as he should be understood even even the lord uh, in the form in a, with the form we can't understand uh, you know as he should be understood so therefore our master say from krishna you must move to krishna tattva from shiva you must move to shiva tattva from rama you must move to rama tattva what does rama represent what does shiva represent what does devi represent the beautiful stories around and about these deities but what does it rep- that itself is deep there's a very beautiful tamil song tattva mariya tarama mooladhara unadu tattva mariya tarama mooladhara mean ganesha hey lord ganesha is it possible for me am i capable of understanding your tattva tattva means in essence what you represent is it possible i see your form in front of me yes i am worshiping you with all my faith and devotion but what do you represent why do you have an elephant face you know animal up to the face on the, up to the face and everything else human being why do you have a small little vehicle over there when you are so fat mouse mushak what does it signify why are you carrying whatever you are carrying in your hands why constantly you are having modak in your hand we all these things why do you have a snake around your um, uh, stomach instead of a beautiful golden waist band like how vishnu has got uh, he ornaments himself why a snake over there so all these things are very very deep mysterious they look to us tattva mariya tarama so therefore we must go beyond what we see the idol is representing the ideal for us so we have to go beyond it all it's not easy for us the teacher has to come and help us out therefore bhagavan how will we describe him guhya your your mystery i can never know you the way you should be known yes i am worshiping you i am singing your glories i am worship praising you all that all that is there i am doing the vratas i am doing the pujas rituals everything but it's so difficult for me to understand you it looks like you're in a secret chamber where is it our own heart not somewhere in kailasa or in vaikuntha our heart it's the cave of the heart they say hridaya guha so it's very difficult for us to reach out to him it looks like it's so my heart is the closest to me we say but still it looks like it's so far away so guhya mysterious it looks very deep very profound very secretive it looks like gabira again gabira also means i can't i can't reach out i don't even know the depth depthless shoreless how much ever i go on praising you glorifying you yes but still i feel i have not even done little bit of justice i we, we can never ever assess you ee pariya sobagu inyava devarali na kaane gopi jana priya gopalani gallade purandara dasaru writes over there you just can never be you can't be compared you can't be inquired into you can't be investigated into and we can't understand you at all you you are such a mysterious person how will i how will i understand you can i weigh you no can i see you no can i hear you no it's all very very difficult so therefore gabira deep very profound depthless incomprehensible gabira also means very majestic and dignified there are so many st- uh, songs on rama and krishna and rama is walking on the streets of mithila everybody was froze actually over there they said we want our sita to get married only to him the way he was walking 
then the whole, his whole body language has been described so beautifully. Not just his beauty, you know, he is very beautiful to look at. When he is moving over the dynamic, he is moving. The very body uh, language is so dignified, so majestic. Krishna, the whole of Vrindavan, Yamuna doesn't want to move forward, the clouds don't want to move forward, the cows don't want to eat anything. Why all of them like almost have frozen over there, just seeing his majestic dignified form. So Gabiraha, Gahanaha means we cannot penetrate into, enter into earlier forts were there around the cities. So no, the army just could not enter into it. So strong the forts were. So like that, Gahana, we can never, how much ever we try to move towards you, it just looks like I can't, you know, enter at all. So this is the spiritual journey within ourselves. As we are moving inside, it looks like there are forts in us. You, we can call it three, the body, mind, intellect, or we can say gross body, subtle body, causal body, or we can say the panchakoshas, the different sheets that are there. It is so difficult for us to rip through or cut through that sheet and move forward within ourselves to reach him who is there at the center because he is the innermost core of our very being. If he is the innermost core of our very being so close to us, why is it we are not able to reach him? Forts are there around us with which we have got all identified. So Gahana, the Navaratri. Uh, Dasara, which we are talking about, Sharan Navaratri. Every day there are Nava Avarna Kritis written by Dikshitar, Muthuswami Dikshitar. Kamalamba Nava Avarna Kritis. Uh, Utkado is written Kamakshi Nava Avarna Kritis. Nine are there plus two. One invocation plus the at the end Mangala. The uh, All of these Kirtans are very, very uh, um, technical. Each one of them is a way for us, is a spiritual, uh, it indicates a spiritual sadhana for us to break through or cut through one of the, uh, you know, uh, sheets. Nine layers are there around. Nine avarana means layers around us. So every day we must cut through, rip, rip one avarana, tear it off within ourselves and then move slowly inward. It's not easy at all. So every kirtan over there explains to us what that fort is, how difficult it is to enter, who are the guardian deities of that fort. This is all on Devi over there. So each one of them we must transcend or cross each fort. Each one is Ghana. Not at all easy for us to penetrate through. Impenetrable. But yes, yet we have to make our effort. So every day if we are able to successfully move through one fort, or break through or rip through, you know, cross one avarana, the sheen. After the ninth one is Vijayadashmi. Our everlasting victory. Everlasting victory means victory over our own limitations, conditionings. And on that day, the person who started his spiritual journey would have reached the state of Jivan Mukti, enlightenment. So, Gahana, not at all easy for us to, uh, you know, access him. Right, in the, we can't just dash into his present, not possible at all. Gahanaha, Guptaha, very well concealed is. Yes. He is within us, but he is so well con con you know, concealed that we, there is no hope of reaching him at all. Everything else in the outside world, known, unknown, we are able to reach. Unknown, after inquiry, investigation, etc. But how will we go and enter and uh, reach out to the Lord? It looks like it's not possible at all. He's so well concealed. What is concealing him? His own Maya is concealing him from us. Him from us. We can say, we can talk about Maya in the form of, uh, you know, three bodies. The, like I said, the, um, sh the three Shariras or the nine Avarnas or the Panchakoshas. All of them mean the same. So whether, whether it is 3 or 5 or 9, whatever it is, we have to cross them all. 
why all of them so beautifully have concealed the lord and kept them kept him inside so there is no chance of us you know getting a glimpse of him he so deep within us in our own in the depths of our own heart he is there he is not anywhere else he is there in us but yet he looks like he is so far away from us he is farther than the farthest yet he is nearer than the nearest this is a small little story for that also one uh, um, rakshasa he was making his way to vaikuntha and he said today i am going to attack the lord lord vishnu and destroy kill him narada met him on the way and narada knew this rakshasa was very f- uh, powerful he had got all the boons so he is now moving towards vaikuntha so immediately narada thought le- thought let me go and warn vishnu that this rakshasa is coming so he went ahead narada can immediately go faster than anybody else so he landed up in vaikuntha and then met bhagavan vishnu and said lord this rakshasa is coming and he is he is very sure of you know attacking you and vanquishing you and killing you what will you do narada was you know wondering what will you do he said don't worry i know what to do so narada went away so then rakshasa came to vaikuntha he did not find vishnu so he searched the whole of vaikuntha we are told he searched all the three worlds he searched every world from satya loka up to the patala everywhere he searched he could not find vishnu he was very very disappointed angry agitated and then he was coming back fretting and fuming again narada met him what happened i did not find vishnu you did not find vishnu no i searched every nook and corner but i could not find him so very very disappointed he went away narada was curious where did bhagavan hide because he searched every nook and corner so he rushed to vaikuntha there bhagavan is lying down on adishesha with lakshmi next to him lord where did you go and hide when he came he searched every nook and corner where did you hide bhagavan smiled and said i hid in his own heart he said these people mortals and the rakshasas asuras they will try to search for me outside because mind is made like that sense organs are made like that so they will search for me outside and they will not be able to get me at all they have to search for me within themselves that is very difficult nobody will take a u turn and search for me within themselves and therefore i thought the safest place for me to hide is in is within each one's heart so therefore guptaha chakra gada dharaha chakra means sudarshana chakra gada means the uh, mace the gada, the gada that the lord has dharaha so uh, we, we know vishnu has got the shanka chakra gada dharaha all these various uh, equipment that he has got what do they indicate to us the chakra indicates the mind to us always it's in motion the chakra is always revolving on the lord's finger so always it is in movement mind also is always in movement we can never have a still mind still mind means we have frozen the thoughts if we can freeze the thoughts and enter into no thought no thought state we are in realization continuously the thoughts are coming in us it movement it represents therefore the chakra represents the mind the gada represents the intellect scientific each one of them has got different dif- they represent different thing over here the chakra sudarshana chakra of bhagavan represents the mind and the gada represents the buddhi tattva and the mana tattva manas tattva the mind and the intellect over here so if we go into the significance of it yes each one of what the lord has got in his hand represents something for us that we will see at the end it will come all the uh, the weapons or the instrument that the lord has got in his hand they will all come later on so over here chakra gada dharaha he has got the chakra also represents kala chakra time sudarshana darshana means to see so means to very well see good darshan divine vision so sudarshana also means the divine vision of the lord if we can transcend time which the chakra represents time revolving or if we can transcend the mind which the chakra represents sudarshana will happen to us we will be able to reach that state of enlightenment 
Gada represents the intellect. With the Gada, we can knock on somebody's head. You know, a knock. Give her a knock. She is not listening to me. You know, we say they use these words. So Gada is always for giving a knock. The intellect always gives us a knock. It tells us, don't do this, don't do this, or do this, it's good for you. But the mind will not listen to the intellect. So now and then, now and then, the intellect tells us, do this, don't do this. You will get into trouble if you do it. But still we don't listen to the intellect in us. Why? The mind will not listen to the intellect and the mind along with the sense organs, along with the organs of action, enter into the world outside because of temptation or whatever it is. So Bhagavan, Chakra Gada Dharaha. With this the 58th stanza is over, the 59th stanza we will take it up in the next class.